Church. Good morning. Good morning. How's everybody doing today? Good. No, good. We're good. All right. Well, I just want to welcome you uh, here today. This beautiful, beautiful. Man, we had a beautiful week, right? It's been it's been gorgeous. And uh, just want to welcome you. And glad that you're here. Glad that you're here in person. For those of you that are joining us online, we're we're glad you're with us too. And so we got we got an exciting day this morning. I hope you're excited. A few announcements, and I probably will forget some. Mm -hmm. I would like, look at our shoe boxes. Look at this stack we got going here. Uh, we, we started out with, I think, 30, but we've actually built more boxes since then, so I don't know how many we have out. But uh, collection time's coming up soon, so here's what we're asking you. If you have taken a shoe box, or if you would like to pack a shoe box, if you need another shoe box, we can take care of that. But... <laughs> we need them back by next Sunday morning. And so uh, the collection time will be coming up soon. That'll give us enough time to kind of get them all together. We would like to pray over them like we did the backpacks and send them out. Uh, and so I'm excited. Thank you so much for packing shoe boxes, but please, please have them back next Sunday. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, we got on the back of your bulletin, we got all kinds of good information coming soon. The Christmas cards. I was in Walmart yesterday. They're playing Christmas music. I almost pushed the shelf over. <laughs> and it's not that I don't like Christmas music. I'm as cheerful and a happy elf like most of the people. But I just need a few more weeks to ease into that. Uh, that's right. I need, I need some turkey and dressing, Jill. And uh, then I'll be ready to move on. Uh, is there any more announcements that I did not mention? I know we don't have a ton of stuff going on, but I did want to. Yes, the, the ladies' Bible studies at 3 o'clock instead of 4. That, yep. Yes, ma'am. Newton Creek Church needs to be. We need to be remembering them because there's several viruses out in that church, and they're not having church today. Okay. Uh, well, we'll ease on into our that prayer request, Newton Creek Baptist Church. I would ask if you would add Brother Frank Queen to your prayer list. They took him to uh, the hospital this morning with COVID. Uh, he is in ICU. And so he's a dear, dear friend of mine. Please remember him and lift him up. Uh, and uh, my son Tanner tested positive. Also, he's in Nashville. Uh, I think he's on the downside of it, though. He's been kind of battling it for a week or so, but he finally had to go get tested uh, for work and everything. And so I haven't talked to him yet today. Uh, any any other additions to our prayer list, if you would just kind of look over those and uh, uh, just... Uh, Brother Jared Hayes at Lovelessville yeah, tested positive. Brother Jared at uh, Hayes at Lovelessville, pastor over there. He was supposed to have went to Newton Creek. Oh, he was, so. He was, yeah, he was supposed to have went to Newton Creek. Okay. So I don't know what Newton Creek They're just be. kind of in a little holding pattern right now, probably. Yeah. Can you spell that last name for me, Miss Charlotte? D E and then a capital R E T D A. Okay. Any, any more? This morning, I'd like to do I'd like to do something a little bit different during our prayer time, if we could. 
If you got your bulletin in your prayer list, um, Michael, would you pray for our top column, the Church Association, Nation and World? Would you would you do that? And I'm going to go ahead and assign those this morning. And, and when we get ready to pray, if you just pray, and then when you finish up, the next person, uh, Chris, would you take our urgent prayer request? And then our next column is the continuing prayer request. Bob, would you pray for that need, please? And then uh, our nursing home and assisted care facilities. Uh, Jim, would you pray for those? And then uh, our homebound. Brother Jeff, would you, would you pray for them? I just really, we just need to be praying a lot. Pray without ceasing. And uh, I think it's okay if we take a little time this morning, a little extra time, and just go to the Father. And so when Michael finishes, then Chris, and then Bob, and then Jim and Jeff, and, and then Jeff, if you'll just close this out, and then we'll go uh, then into uh, our children's time. Go ahead, Michael. Let's go to the Father. Yeah, church association, our nation, and our world. Right. Uh, okay, yes, sir. Okay. Father God, we come to you this morning. We thank you for the for this church, God. We're we're blessed to be here and be a part of this local church body and just your your church as a whole. God, we ask your uh, your blessings for all the members here, for uh, our leadership, our ministries, that everything we do be done according to your your will and your desire for us, God. Ask you, Lord, to. Uh, Watch over and help our, our uh, extended ministries, our the people that work at the jail service, Lord, and our campers on mission, uh, on missions ministry that we, we support all the uh, the ministries and the mission work and the outreach that, that goes on for you worldwide. Lord, we just ask that you put put your blessing on those things, God, and, and just ask for assurance from you that we're all we're going about the right way on those things. Help us, Lord, to do things the right way and to support the world and your missions how we should. In Jesus' name. Father God, I ask you to be with Brother John. Brother John's always been special to me. Uh, just be with Brother John and work in his life as, as you see fit. God bless you. Please be with Brother Kim's sister in your arms. Uh, give her comfort, give her healing, Lord. And Mr. Thomason. Ask you to work in that situation once again with Miss Cooper and, and whatever need that, that she may have right now, and Miss Goldwork as well. Just ask you to be with Miss Lipscomb and for her surgery and be with Dave Lennon's dad. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the blessings you give us this week, and we ask that you would continue to. Uh, be with these that are, that are on our continuing prayer request. Uh, Lord, we know that, that uh, you're in charge of all things and uh, that you would have your hand on, on these situations of these people that are, that are on our continuing prayer request. And uh, we uh, trust that you will, uh, everything will come out as, as, as uh, you see fit, Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask you now to pour out your blessings to Miss Martha and to Walker over at the nursing homes. We pray, Lord, that you would bless the caregivers that take care of them. And we ask you, Lord, to keep them safe, keep the atmosphere where they live safe. And, and we ask you, Lord, if it be thy will, that they be healed and restored. That, it, that you would do that and, and if not Lord we pray that you would keep them comfortable in their atmosphere pray Lord for the for the family members uh, who try to provide support and and we pray Lord that uh, if it be thy will that they be able to establish visits where they can 
get to visit with their family members so that their hearts would be comforted. We pray for that too. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, today as we come together, we pray as a as a, a group together for Miss A. Lou and Miss Kitty, Father, and we pray that they will know that we as a church never forget them because they're always on our mind and we think about them daily, Father. Please bless them and let them know that we love them and God loves them too. Father, as a church, we pray that we can do the things we need to do for you, Father, to witness daily, to pray, read your scriptures, Father, and most of all, never forget what you've done for us. Go with us now, dear Lord. Lead God and direct us and forgive us when we fail. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If all the children would come to the front, please. I've got a little story, and I bet y'all have heard this story. If you want to, you can sit anywhere you want. Oh, yeah. It's upside down. It's not a good way to start this. I love that dress. It's so pretty. If you want to sit over here, sit over here by me if you want to. There you go. It looks perfect. I'm interested in yours. How is everybody today? Did y'all see my big green box? I wonder what is in this green box. But something to do, we're going to lead up to God's protection and how he takes care of us. You want to see what's in the box? The element of surprise. I show everybody. What's that? What's that? Bottle. A bottle, that's right. Yes. What's that? Pisces. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> girls. Yeah. What's this? Is, is that pajamas? Pajamas. Yes. Good winter pajamas to keep you all nice and warm. What do you think this is? A blanket. A blanket. That's right. Could be a towel too. I wasn't sure. But <laughs> the blanket. That's right. To keep you nice and warm. Warm up and get your favorite toy and watch a little TV. What's this? Overalls. overalls and overalls are some of my favorite cute little clothes for not necessarily babies but that's what we're going to lead up to talking about babies but we all need clothes we need clothes well who buys these things who's buying who takes care of you and buys these kind of things mm -hmm. pardon your parents. your parents that's right your parents your mama and your daddy takes care of you and that's where it started, because you had to have these things, and they took care of you when you were a little bitty baby. Well, this is, we're going to talk about a baby in the Bible, and the extreme measures that this mom did for this baby, okay? Uh, let me think of anything else a baby might need before we move on. Milk? That's right, that's right. Anything else? Diapers. Food? Yes. Diapers. Diapers, yeah. <laughs> we know, all know how important diapers are. Yes. I knew y'all would be able to think of more things that we might need, that baby might need. Well, I, this is a Bible story that is about a little boy that was born in a dangerous time and the extremes that his mother went to take care of him and to save him. And... Um, so he could grow up and learn things and get the best of life. Just look like your mothers and your fathers want for you. There was a new Egypt, there was a new king in Egypt. And he knew he did not know about Joseph. Remember Miss Susie was talking about you wanna go, you wanna go ahead and have your treat? Okay. She just wants to go walking. Okay. Well, I like to walk. <laughs> I guess stay right here right now. Um, anyway, there was a new king in Egypt, and that that he did not know what Joseph did for Egypt last time. Joseph interpreted the dreams and said, "You need to you need to save up those grain, and you need to uh, store them up 
so he won't starve. So he really, Joseph helped Egypt not starve to death. Well, the new king did not like the Israelites getting so strong and growing in numbers. And he was fearful that he, they would take over the country. So he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to say, Israelites, I'm going to make you work a little bit harder. That will crush your spirit. You know, nobody wants to work a little bit hard, but sometimes we need to, don't we? Well, it turned out that didn't work. That just made him stronger. So he said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to destroy all the newborn babies. I'm, I'm going to get rid of them. The girls can uh, survive, but the boys, no way. They're going to be destroyed. They're going to be killed. Well, there was this little Hebrew mama that had a baby boy. And that baby boy, she hid for three months. These little babies are pretty small at three months. But after three months, she couldn't hide that baby anymore. So she said, I've got to save that baby. So she put him in a basket. I mean, a bigger basket than this. And made it herself. It's not like this. But then put tar and on underneath that basket and put it in the water. So it was waterproof, so it would it would float. And she put that basket in the water close to the Pharaoh's daughter, knowing that she would come to that river and bathe in that river. So the Pharaoh's daughter, which is the king that was going to try to destroy the little baby boys, his daughter found the baby and felt sorry for the baby. And the baby... He said, uh, she got the baby, and her sister said, do you want me to go get the Hebrew woman and to feed this baby? And the Pharaoh's daughter said, yes, go get, go get the, a mom, but ended up getting the real mom of the baby boy. And the sister of the Pharaoh's daughter brought that Hebrew woman to mama to the baby. And Pharaoh's daughter said, I will pay you. I will pay you to take care of that baby. And then that will, you can stay here. So the Pharaoh's daughter had the mama of the baby feed the baby. And when he got old enough, the mom gave the baby to the Pharaoh's daughter. And the Pharaoh's daughter named this baby. Does anybody know what the baby in the basket? Moses. Very good, Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> the baby's name was Moses. And does everybody, that name should ring a bell to most of you because he was a very powerful leader for God. And, um, and that was all because the, his mom went to those extremes. So what, what I'd like to do is I want you to think about the extremes your parents, like we said at the beginning, do for you. But that reminds me of the God that what, how much God loves us and wants to protect us. <coughs> Does God want to take care of us? Aren't you glad we have mamas and daddies to take care of us? Well, let's say a little prayer and uh, thank God for the protection of our parents. God, thank you for this wonderful day and this wonderful weather, this harvest time. But what we want to focus on right now with these children is thank, thank them. Thank you for their parents to bring them to church and take care of them. And they're the little bitty babies that we will continue to. And we've got to help know that God protects you and cares for his children, which is all of these boys, girls, and all of us. So thank you, Lord, for all of those things. In, in Jesus Christ's name only, amen. Well, I, I, this is all I have, the treats. Is anybody tired of candy? If, if you're tired of candy, <laughs> give it to somebody that's not tired of candy. Okay, I have one, two. I have six things to do, so do y'all want some candy? Oh, sure you do. My never got to down either. See this? There you go. I have enough for everybody. Would you like some candy? Thank you. Y'all have a good week. So good to see everybody. We had a good crowd.
I have more candy in the car. <laughs> Good morning, and as we begin our worship service this morning, would you turn to hymn number 508? 508, as we stand and sing the first, second, and final stand. sitting down, turn over to 585. Do you ever sit around and feel bad? You know, I just don't have this, I don't have this, but think about what you do have. So we need to take a time in our life and count our blessings what God has blessed us with. Let's sing 585 the first, second, and final step. When
week we will be celebrating Veterans Day and I was just thinking, you know, when we're counting our blessings and when we're looking at things to be thankful for, uh, the freedom to, to sit here and assemble is one of those things that we can be thankful for. And so if, if you're a veteran here this morning, would you, would you just stand so we can, we can see you and just say thank you? And go ahead and stand up. Don't be shy because you're going to be on the big screen here in just a minute. So, yeah, Steve, and Steve's one, but he has stepped out. So to honor our veterans, I, I asked for photos. And, and uh, you started out small, but you came on strong in the end. <laughs> And so I put together a little video, and I think Mike is the music music geared up and ready to go. I think the the, the computer. So Luke, if you go ahead, I hope you enjoy our our veterans treat.
I'm just going to admit to you, I must be transparent, uh, I, I, I'm a mess this morning. I, I, I think the struggle bus pulled up sometime this week, and I, I hopped on it, right? And, uh, and, and I just got something on my heart. I just want to kind of share. This isn't part of the sermon. This is extra. This is extra. And uh, I just wrote it down, and I don't usually feel like I have to address current issues and what's going on in our country. I, I just don't feel that. I feel like if you preach the gospel, the gospel transforms lives and that transforms people and that changes how we, we live and how we treat others. And also I'm proclaimed to, to, to proclaim the truth in God's word, not speak on politics. It's not what God's called me to do. When I was in basic training, I had a drill sergeant by the name of Drill Sergeant Weaver. He was from South Alabama. 
And he would remind us regularly, I am from the great state of Alabama. And there was sometimes his accent was so, so thick, that South Alabama accent was so thick, we needed a translator to even know what he was saying. <laughs> but he imparted some wisdom upon me in basic training back many, many years ago that I have not forgotten. He said this, and he said it often. He said, opinions, and I'm, I'm going to keep it rated G, okay? <laughs> he said, opinions are like your bottom. Everybody's got one, and they all stink. <laughs> I have opinions just like everybody else has opinions. And I have opinions with everything that's going on. And, and I, I rarely, if ever, offer it. Because I think about that. It's just my opinion. And oftentimes, even when I'm asked, I'm reluctant to even share it because it's just my opinion. But as your pastor, and I got to tell you, church, I'm still overwhelmed by what that even means and the responsibilities that come with that. I just feel like this morning, I want to say this to you, and I'm asking you for a favor. Really, I'm, I'm, maybe this is just a reminder. Remember whose you are. Remember who you belong to. Remember who you represent. You don't represent a political party. You don't represent the demographic. You don't represent a denomination. You don't represent a family or a creed or anything else. You and I, we represent Jesus. Amen. You are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Now this doesn't mean that you don't stand up for the truth. And this doesn't mean that, that you speak out against great evil because church, I have a feeling that we're going to be standing toe to toe with the devil. But remember whose you are. When you have the opportunity to respond to family and friends, to co-workers, to strangers, whether it's in person or like so many who decide to take to Facebook, remember who you are. And I got a couple of passages I want to, I just want to throw them out for you because it's like I said, my opinion is not anything, but, but this uh, Philippians uh, four eight finally brothers whatever is true whatever is honorable whatever is just whatever is pure whatever is lovely whatever is commendable if there is any excellent if there is anything worthy of praise think about these things and what you have learned and received you heard and seen in me practice these things and the God of peace be with you and then Colossians four chapter five and this this one. Church, and I'm asking for you to help me. Listen, if, if you see me acting like a knucklehead, say, stop acting like a knucklehead. I've already like deleted so much on Facebook, the same thing. Walk in wisdom towards outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. And as Forrest Gump said, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> so if you have your Bibles this morning for sermon number two, I love you, church, so much. And we got to rise above it all because we're in Christ. Psalm 100. We're looking at Psalm 100. We're continuing our sermon series on the power of thanks. And today is talking about a grateful heart. Psalms 100 is the only psalm with the title, a psalm of thanksgiving. Now, the Hebrew word for thanksgiving literally means confession. In this case, it means to confess God's character and his works. You see, it's hard. If you haven't realized this by now, it's hard staying positive in our current culture and in our current situation. It's hard to. And we're constantly being bombarded with so much negative stuff. And sadly, tragically, a lot of that negativity comes from fellow believers hitching a ride on the negative train. 
it's easy. It's easy to get pulled in. Listen. Stroll in the comments on Facebook. <laughs> it happens. I like click and then there's like 84 comments. And then it's on like, it's, it's like, um, and it's like, Real in. Next thing you know, you're. It, it's easy, and and I know it's not realistic to think everything is sunshine and kittens, right? I, I'm not tonight to that fact, and it's hard to go around constantly with a sunny disposition. I know you find it hard about me because I have such a sunny disposition. It's hard, but we're called to be a people of joy. We're called to be a people of contentment, a, a, a people of praise and gratitude, and we are to have a grateful heart in any and all situations. So how can we stay positive and joyful in our current culture? Well, practical ways are this. Don't watch the news. Amen. And I haven't since Wednesday morning. Stay away from toxic people and, and groups on social media. And don't find yourself getting pulled into the hysteria from family, co-workers, and friends. Being positive and joyful is rooted in something much deeper. Now, Psalm 100 is not just any psalm of thanksgiving and praise. It's believed that this psalm was sung by God's people on their way to the temple during the sacrifice of praise. So they sang it as a congregation. And we say we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We sing that song. But, but what does it mean to offer a sacrifice of praise? Hebrews 13, 15 says, Through him let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Now, when you use sacrifice and praise together, that seems like a contradiction. Because a sacrifice is something that costs us something. And in the context of the Old Testament, it was the killing of an animal. But sacrifice and praise, they actually hold hands with one another. They are intertwined. You see, it's easy to be thankful or to say thanks when it benefits us or, or doesn't cost us anything. But the fruit of lips that acknowledges his name means we praise God when we are overwhelmed and we feel like the entire world is crushing us. We offer the fruit of the lips when we are at our wit's end. We offer the fruit of lips when we feel like we can't go on. To praise God in these times requires personal sacrifice. It takes our all to cast over the uncertainties to God, knowing that even if we don't understand him or see him moving, we offer a sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. But we can't do this on our own. It's through him. We need Christ to be truly joyful and positive. Gratitude and thankfulness is achieved when we praise, serve, and sing to God for who he is and what he's done. That's basically worship in its simplest form. There's a direct correlation between praise and worship and a grateful heart. When we praise, that when we begin to praise him, we begin to reflect on how grateful we are. And when we're grateful, we're going to praise him from the overflow of our hearts. So let's look at our text this morning. Five short verses, Psalm 100. A psalm for giving thanks. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Blessed be his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. Well, your outline this morning, I basically have five points and they're five verses broken down. So number one is a grateful heart shouts for joy. Our text begins with a shout, a proclamation to the Lord. It, it's getting us ready for what follows. And the psalmist says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Now, some translations, including mine reads, make a joyful noise. But the better translation is shout joyfully. The word is ruah, and it means shout or to make a loud noise. Now, after the Israelites marched around Jericho seven times, they, they God commanded them to shout ruah. 
He says, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And when they shouted, the city walls fell down, allowing the Israelites to win the victory. The word ruah is a battle cry. I promise you, church, that when they marched around this city and Joshua gave them the command to shout, they didn't go, go walls fall down. They were screaming at the top of their lungs. They were shouting until their voices went hoarse. And as the walls crumbled, I'm sure the excitement, as they started to see the cracks in the wall and 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 they started to rumble and everything, I'm sure that it it got louder and they cheered louder and louder and they began to scream at the top of their lungs. That's what the psalmist is saying. The, The word also refers to the spontaneous shout of victory that greeted a king returning from battle. There was a messenger that would leave ahead of the king and the army and he would run into the city to proclaim the, the good news. The, the word there is evangel, evangelion, which is the word where we get gospel. It's the good news. It's a proclamation that the king is victorious. And he would run into the city and he would tell all the people, the king is victorious, the king is victorious. Get ready, we're going to celebrate the victory. And on the next day, all the people would line the streets and they would throw flowers and stuff in the street and the king would come in and as his horse would would hit those rose petals, it would put a fragrance in the air and the people would shout for victory. It's a shout of victory, not a whiny noise. It's not shout for joy to Yahweh, <laughs> all you lands. Come on, everybody. It's not a complaining one. It's not a soured up noise. It's not a bad attitude one. It's not a gossipy one. It's not a conspiracy theorist one, but it is a joyful noise. It is a battle cry. It is a shout. This joyful noise is the kind of noise that is produced out of a thankful, grateful heart. But so, so what is exactly a, a joyful noise? Because we often say, you know, well, the Lord, uh, we, we use it for singing, right? And, and, and for some of those that are vocally challenged, we're saying, well, the Lord just says to make a joyful noise. Well, my point is this, this joyful noise that the psalmist is talking about, this shout is not subtle. It, it, it's it's a measured sound that is it's not a measured sound that's dignified and refined. You know, David was scolded for dancing before the Lord, and he's like, "Oh, it, I could be even more undignified than this if you want to complain about it." He said, "I'm dancing before my God." The psalmist is calling people to raise the roof to give it all they have. They are to praise the Lord for the wondrous things that he's done for his people, for the victories that he gives them each and every day. But this shout, this battle cry is not just noise, but it is a shout for joy. It's the kind of energetic praise that wells up within you until it can no longer be contained. But you may be saying, I'm not an overly expressive person. I'm kind of subdued. I'm calm. I'm like Clark Kent. I'm mild-mannered. I'm refined. Well, God didn't say, shout to the Lord only if you have an exuberant personality. It's actually a command. He commands all the earth, everybody that's saved to shout. And if you have experienced victory in your life, you shout and you shout loud. Verse 2, the grateful heart serves and sings. First thing he says is serve the Lord with gladness. Now, the word used for serve means to work or serve. It is often used in the Hebrew scripture to categorize the kind of work that a person did. When it's used here of the service to Yahweh, it reminds us that our worship constitutes a significant part of our service to God. Now, a question may be this. How do we serve a God who needs nothing? God is all powerful. What can you or I possibly do for God that God can't do for himself? Nothing. God is all knowing. What possible piece of wisdom or information could we share with God that God doesn't already know and know it far better than you and I? Nothing. 
Everything belongs to God from the highest mountain to the deepest ocean and everything in between from the tiniest molecule that cannot be seen to the largest star in the solar system. God owns it. What could you or I possibly give to God that he doesn't already own? Nothing. <laughs> to work or to serve Yahweh with gladness means that we are to give what we have as our symbol of our gratitude and devotion. Church, he just wants you. He just wants you to give what you have. You see, in, in, in the hands of Jesus, in the hands of a little boy, right? A couple little sar, dried sardines and a couple little hard hush puppies, it's just a boy's lunch. But when it's placed in the hands of Jesus, it feeds thousands and thousands and there's baskets left over. He just wants you. He wants what you have. And we're to serve with a grateful heart. To serve the Lord with gladness is to be a cheerful giver, lending a helping hand to those in need, showing mercy and kindness to those who are struggling and to do things that are out of our heart and not out of obligation or duty, but out of an overflow from a grateful heart, knowing that God has done a great work in you. Listen, working for the Lord, we should be excited about it. We should be excited to come to church. Whatever our ministry is, whatever our responsibility is, whatever our duties are here, we should do it with gladness. Not like, uh, I gotta go teach those kids this morning. They never listen to me. How about when we roll out our feet? Praise God. Praise God. I don't know if you saw the movie The Rookie. Uh, it's an older movie. It's a true story about a, a high school baseball coach that, that made it to the pros. Uh, but he had to go through the minor leagues. And uh, there was this guy on his team. His name was Brooks. And, and he, was, he was just like one step away from the majors. And here this guy was, he was married, he had kids, he was like 20 years older than everybody else on the ball team, and, and uh, he was just traveling in his old bus, and he was struggling, like, why am I here? I miss my family. And, and, and he realized, you know, Brooks was complaining about it, and, you know, I'm never going to make it to the majors. Well, he finally made it to the majors, but they're having this conversation, and finally he looks at Brooks, he said, you know what we get to do today? He said, we get to play baseball. Every morning we get up and we get to go play baseball. Listen, church, you know what we get to do? We get to get up every morning and we get to serve the Lord. And we should be excited about that. He says, come into his presence with singing. This next line, it introduces us to two new pieces to the call to praise. Coming into the Lord's presence and singing. Coming before or into his presence is a call to stand before his throne and we're to take advantage of his accessible presence. Church, we can go before the throne of God anytime we want to. The veil is torn. We, we can approach the throne knowing that we're not going to be turned away. That he's always going to be there. And the second is singing. Church, aren't you glad that we're able to like sing again? Congregationally, and we have special music, and we're able to do that. The word translates a joyful shout or singing, and it calls us to bring exuberance and energy and enthusiasm to our soul. When we come together and sing, we're not singing for the benefit of those around us, but we are singing to God. We are standing in His presence. We belong to God, and we should be people of joy. Now, we Baptists, all right, we're going to narrow it down. Here we go. We Baptists, listen, we're the only ones that can sing victory in Jesus and look like we just ate a sour pickle. <laughs> oh, victory in Jesus. I said, I'm like, come on. That's the battle cry right there, right? And, and, and so a question, does our singing as a church display a grateful heart? I, I promise you, listen, when we get to go back to Haiti, I, I want to take some of you folks. Here's what, they don't have windows in their church, okay? Because it's hot and windows are an extra expense. It's all concrete block. They don't have windows. But what they do is they have a sound system. 
and the speakers are about this big. Okay? They set them bad boys in the window. And, and, and Michael, that, the volume slider bar all the way up. It's distorted. It's loud. And it is oh so good. Amen. When they sing, what they want is they want their voices, their song to spill out into the streets. And, and I, I kid you not, anywhere you go in that town, you can always at some time hear church music playing and them having church. I mean, how about people drive by on Sunday morning and, and we got to, well, we can't open the windows, but, but if they can hear us. But, but as each other, as we sing together and our voices are, are mashed and lifted up, does it display a, a grateful heart? Do, do, we, do we believe the words on the page? Number three, a grateful heart knows the creator. Here we get the reasons to be glad in the Lord and to have a grateful heart. He says, know that the Lord, he is God. Now, now remember, know that the Lord, remember, uh, Lord's in all caps there. We, we had that from the sheep series. It's God's name, Yahweh. He is God. Unlike the pagan nations around him that worship all these false and fake gods, Israel followed after the one true God. And, and he's identified here by the psalmist. When you know the one true God, your heart cannot help but be overflowing with gratitude. This verse that describes a relationship of submission to God and submission is directly related to thankfulness. How so? Well, I'm glad you asked. If you're grumbling or complaining about your circumstances, you're not subject to God's sovereign hand on your life. When, when we complain, what's happening is, is we're implying that we can do a better job than God at running our lives. We want him to step back and let us take control. You ever see that license plate? I'm going to tell you, if, if you have this license plate, I'm sorry. I do not mean to offend you, but I hate it. It says, Jesus is my co-pilot. Think about that. Listen. He, he, he's, he's flying the plane. Amen. Listen, I don't even want to be co-pilot. Listen, I don't even want to be in charge of the radio or the heat buttons. <laughs> Jesus, take the wheel. All of it. Drive it. Fly it. Take control of my life. I, I mess up everything that I even put my hands on when I try to do it myself. When we submit to God willingly, then we can say, thank you, Lord, for working in my life because you are good. It is he who made us and we are his. Uh, letter B, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. We submit because he is God. He is our creator. He made us. He is our good shepherd. We belong to him. And we really only need one reason to be thankful, and that's the fact that he is God. The psalm said, uh, a psalm of thanksgiving, be thankful because he's God. He could have just kind of stopped it right there because that's enough. It's more than enough. Psalms 8, 3 through 9 says, When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them? human beings that you care for them? Or, or who am I that you shall be mindful of me? We are his people. We are his sheep. God chose Israel and called them to follow him. He redeemed them from slavery in Egypt. We, the church, once we were not his people, we were sinners separated from him, but he chose us and called us to follow him, redeeming us from the bondage of sin. Because we know him in a real and personal way, like the good shepherd knows and lays down his life for his sheep, our hearts should be grateful and full of praise. Verse 4, a grateful heart gives thanks and praise. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. We should praise and thank God in our private devotion and quiet time. But these verses that we're looking at, they focus on corporate worship. It's not talking about our quiet time. And there's times to be solemn. There's times to be quiet. There's times to be in that just that spirit of, of, of just solemnness. But that's not what it's talking about here. Gates and courts describe the temple where God's people came together to worship. Uh, there were several large gates that permitted access to the temple. There were four courtyards, the court of Gentiles that was open only to the Gentiles. 
There was the court of women open to Israelite women. There was the court of Israelites open to ritually pure Israelite men. And there was the court of priests, and it was restricted to the priest. Beyond the courtyards were the holy place where the priest attended to the golden lampstand and the table of showbread and the golden altar of incense. And then you had the holy of holies where only the high priest was authorized to enter and only the one day on the day of atonement. The psalmist tells us how we are to approach these places of worship with thanksgiving and praise. We are to prepare our hearts beforehand and coming with the deliberate purpose of offering praise to God because he commands it. But church, he deserves it. He deserves it. And dozens of times in the scripture, we are commanded to praise the Lord, which implies that we are to do it whether we feel like it or not. If there's ever a time in our life that we don't feel like praising the Lord, something is wrong with our spiritual life and we need to stop and do a little soul inventory. But the thing is this, there may be times when we begin praising God because he commands it, but what usually happens next is the feelings follow and our heart opens up and the thankfulness begins to, to flow. And as we grow and as we experience his love and faithfulness more and as we begin to know him more, we will praise him more and more. You see, it is an impossibility to know and see God in his glory without praise building up inside your heart. It says, give thanks to him. Our praise should focus on what God has done and on who he is, especially that he saved us from our sins through the blood of Jesus. What are you most thankful for? What, do, you, do you find yourself only thanking him for the, the bigger things in life or do you even include the, the smallest of things? Because the psalmist encourages us to be mindful of all God's gifts regardless of the size. We're to bless his name. And we looked at the word bless last week and the Hebrew word barak is closely related to the word kneel or knee. And this expression that we kneel or bow before God is a demonstration of reverence and an expression of praise. It's a, it's a posture of praise. We find from these verses that praise takes on many forms. We go from the battle cry of joy to the kneeling before God, and each form has a place within the grateful heart and within our corporate worship. Number five, in verse five, it's the source of the grateful heart. The source of the grateful heart. In these verses, there's seven commands. Verse 1, it says, shout joyfully. Uh, verse 2, serve, come before him. Verse 3, know. Verse 4, enter, give thanks and bless. And then in verse 5, it gives the reason behind the commands. For the Lord is good. Church, do you believe that the Lord is good? Do you believe that the Lord is good? Yes. Yeah. He is good. And the word good means moral, upright. It's speaking to the character of God. And we really don't need another reason or explanation. Our heart should be exploding with gratitude simply because God is good. A.W. Tozer put it like this. The goodness of God is that which disposes him to be kind, cordial, benevolent, and full of goodwill towards men. And the psalmist mentions two aspects of God's goodness, his loving kindness or steadfast love and his faithfulness. Letter B is steadfast love endures forever. Well, steadfast love means kindness, loving kindness, mercy, goodness, faithfulness, or love. Each of these meanings indicate a kindly and positive attitude toward the beloved. That's towards you and I. An interesting note, if you're curious, the Hebrew word comes from the word stork. The Hebrews noticed how storks had an uncommon love for and protection of their young. They built their nests securely in the high trees. Psalms 104, 17 says, In them the birds build their nests. The stork has her home in the fir trees. And they, they watched that and they recognized that and they saw that care and protection and they said that God's love for his own is like the stork. 
He nurtures and protects us from all enemies. He cares for us. He feeds us. His love does not depend on us, but on his steadfast love that endures forever. Ever. It is without end, and that's what makes it unique, and it's because God is good. And his faithfulness to all generations. God is not fickle or moody. Aren't you glad of that? God's attitude does not change from day to day where he acts one way towards us one day and another way the next. He is true to his eternal attributes. He is faithful to his promises. He is true to his revealed purposes. Throughout the entirety of the scripture, his faithfulness is proved towards his people and he will be true to his promises in the future. Church, he has promised us that we will be with him in his presence for all eternity and we're working towards that and he will not break that promise. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. People come and go in our life. People have abandoned us. People have broken our hearts. People leave us. People pass away. But God's promise, I will never leave you or forsake you. He will never abandon his children. Never. So we can confidently say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear what can man do to me. Psalms 36, 5, 10. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heaven. Your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgment are like the great deep man and beast. You say, O Lord, how precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They feast on the abundance of your house. And you give them drink from the river of your delights. For with you is the fountain of life. In your light do we light. Oh, continue your steadfast love to those who know you and your righteousness to the upright of heart. This morning, we're going to have a time of invitation. And Jeff comes and, and the ladies come to lead us. I would ask again, if you would just kind of bow your head and just take a few moments, a few moments just to, to stop and to thank God for his goodness. Just take a moment to reflect on all the things that he's done for you. Think about all the times that you felt so alone, but you knew you knew that he was right there with you. Think of all the times that you didn't think you were going to make it through, how you were going to make end meets, but yet he provided somehow, some way. Think about answered prayers, late nights on your knees, maybe praying for a lost person, somebody, maybe a son or a daughter that you spent on your knees praying for them that he answered. Think about the fact that we just got up this morning we were able to come together. Think about the fact that we're going to leave here in a few minutes and, and, and we, we're probably going to have a, a pretty good lunch when so much of our world doesn't have anything to eat. And we're going to go home and we're going to probably take a nap maybe in a chair or a couch or something that's comfortable and we're going to have a roof over our head. All these things, church, we have so much to be thankful for. I'm going to pray, and, and then if you would, after I pray, if you would just stand and join us singing in the invitation. I want to encourage you, if you're here this morning without Jesus, the Bible says that you're lost and you're separated from God by your sins. But that you can be forgiven that God sent His only Son to die for you for your sins. But you must confess your sins and repent of them and turn to Him. Ask for His forgiveness and then you will receive eternal life. I'm going to pray. Father God, thank You for this time. This is Your time. Move among Your people. Your will be done. It's in Your precious name I pray. Hymn number 634. Would you please stand and you say?
Amen. Anybody want to share something they're thankful for? I I'm thankful God placed me here. Amen. When I was 18 years old, before I met Keith, coming to Kevel, Kentucky was not on my <laughs> bucket list. <laughs> and, uh, but God knew when I was in my mother's womb that this is where I was supposed to be. And uh, I'm so thankful to be Amen. Amen. Oh, that, that needs to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Amen. Miss C. I said I'm thankful every day for my eyes. My mother was blind when she was blind. Amen. And I'm, I'm thankful. It's precious, isn't it, Miss C? That, that gift of sight, it sure is. I'm thankful for my church family. I'm thankful for the service this morning. I, I needed it. I, you know, whatever happens, I, I would praise God. Trump wins, I will praise God. If Joe Biden wins, I will praise God. If if I become rich, I will praise God. <laughs> Whatever happens, I, Michael, I will praise God. Michael played a song a long time ago that I've never forgot. I will praise him in the storm. And it was a bad day for you, I remember that. But you said, and I, I don't ever forget that song. And I thank you every time I hear it, but I think of myself too. I will praise him in the storm. I'm thankful for our Veterans Tribute today. I thought that was very special. Yeah, that was well, I will uh, I will share that. Um, I cry every time I watch. I'm sorry. I'm, uh, <laughs> that song is is incredible. But uh, I will actually share that on Facebook, and I will put on YouTube so it'll be available for, for everybody. Like that. Yeah, thank you. It brought back a lot of memories of people I haven't seen in a long time. That's a young Jeff, too. Oh, yeah. Not him. He did. He is pretty. A little bit less white. I'm thankful for my pastor. Amen. Continue to pray for me. We love you. We love you. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. Pray for our schools. This is. Well, if you feel like shouting, listen, church, I, I, I know that there's like these little, if, if you feel like shouting during church, shout. If you feel like raising your hands when you sing, raise your hands. You worship the Lord and be, you, you let, it, it's, it's you and him. And, and I know it might not be what we normally do, but sometimes, listen, I, I probably won't run up and down the aisles. <laughs> I might. I'm not saying I'm not. Miss Mary Lou might stick her foot out and trip me and say, don't you be running in church, young man. But, you know, first, first person I ever baptized was my son. He was six years old. I was at Spring Bible. First person ever baptized. And, and, and I baptized him, another little boy named Paxton. They were both the same age. And I was like, Tanner's going first. He's going to be the first person I ever baptized. And I got cleaned up and I came down. And, and Brother Frank Queen was our interim pastor. We were without a pastor. And I, and I came down and, and I just whispered to Frank. I said, can I, can I do something? And he's like, yeah, what's that? Because you know, I, I was like, I said, I just got to let it out. And I was like, yeah, woo! <laughs> I was so excited. I was so excited. I just couldn't contain it because he was so good. And everybody looked at me kind of like, that's okay though. Because I, I mean, I was just, I just couldn't contain it. Sometimes you just can't contain it. Can't contain it. Without coffee. Without, that's right, Miss Mary Lou. No coffee. Yes, dear. When I was a little kid, uh, I remember uh, there was two or three times uh, while I was growing up that Shout to the Lord. Oh, I got so Lord. excited talking to him about it. Everything with, with order and focus on the Lord. And uh, it's good. It's good. Well, Brother Jeff, would you dismiss us? And you all have a great, great afternoon. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day you bless us with, Father. We thank you for this amazing church service we have, Father. We pray that the thankfulness and the love that you gave us Father, we can return by 
worship you in truth and in spirit, Father. And help us to always remember we owe everything to you. Thank you so much for Jesus who died for us. Be God and direct us now, dear Lord. Forgive us when we fail. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Like he said, the best some trail, some cow, and the Well, just a second. Not me. Not too much me. I don't think I can be too Oh, man. I don't know. One more week a day, then you're going tonight. I can't travel good When? Midnight. I mean, when? Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Hey, who am I doing? That's too much more. At my house. When you get on on Sunday morning, okay, I'll pick you up. Okay, I'm good. Okay. Maybe get a nap and come to church. He wants to go to Grandma's, I'm sure. <laughs> You're not standing up. You did so I don't think so. I'm going to go help her climb this wall. Granny, I'm going to run in front of you. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm praising God in this you're not the only one. We're not the only one. We just need to he wasn't there because he was there I'm glad your face is better, I guess. Yeah, like three boots. Yeah, like four yeah, I remember. Oh, yes, and I said, 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 I Oh, Christian, it's where to go.
Uh, yeah, the boys are out in the parking lot. Yeah, I know. Having a friggin' fit. We, we were a one station unit training. So when we went to Fort Knox for our summer, we might pick up in like boot camp or we might pick up like during the armor training. So yeah, we had to do that. Saturday was, uh, you know, Saturdays, 12 to 6, I worked till 8. I mean, oh, I mean, I thought Thursday I worked till, till 8. Yeah, I thought she had two, two days. Yeah. 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 Yeah.